Welcome back to Yankees Hot Stove. I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Mike Ford. Mike, back in Tampa, have you been training at the facility already or are you waiting to get back to Steinbrenner Field? Yeah, uh, we've been there uh, doing, our, doing our thing, honestly, since probably November. So it's been really nice. They've had it open, uh, obviously, with, with all the challenges this year. It's kind of nice to have that place to go into and, and just kind of work out, not worry about much, and, and just kind of be around – all the guys that are here and and get to be able to do that's pretty nice. So uh, moving down here was was an easy choice. Because of everything that you guys went through last year, are you essentially just used to all the protocols and the new way of doing business? Yeah, I think uh, I think that we all kind of got pretty used to them uh, last year. Obviously, we've had some more sports uh, start back up in in basketball and, and football. Uh, you know, obviously getting through their season, so. It might be one of those things that sticks around for a little bit, but, uh, you know, I think we're, we're on the upswing with the vaccine uh, here and uh, see how long that takes to get out. But uh, hopefully we get back to normal pretty soon. How many guys are working out at the facility right now? And what does a typical day look like for you when you go there? Um, so right now, uh, Luke goes in every day. I, I, it's kind of dependent on the day, but we probably have anywhere from four to seven guys in the complex uh, at any time. And, uh, you know, it's great to have the training staff there, strength st staff there. So I usually get in there around 10 o'clock. Uh, just started hitting again in, in January. So that adds about 30 minutes to the day. But, uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, with, the, with just getting in shape and everything, I got to do a lot of cardio to get in shape. So uh, it's about an hour on the Stairmaster every day for me, a, a nice long lift of about an hour. And then, uh, you know, we, we just, you know, go hit, hit after that or before, depending on uh, when the coaches can be there. From a baseball perspective, anything in particular you're working on this offseason? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I didn't have the greatest year with the bat. Um, that's where my confidence lies. And uh, that's, that's what I got to get back to doing. Uh, just kind of getting back to the 2019 form uh, that I had and, and just that confidence and build, you know, I, this year was very, very strange with the stop and the start, uh, even in spring training. And, you know, there's no excuse to it. And, and I'm not trying to make one, but uh, just to get back to being confident again in the box and, and key in on those little things that I was doing in, in the nine, in 2019 video and not doing it in 2020. Did you identify something in the video mechanical that you need to change? Or is it simply because of the lack of reps and crazy season that you just couldn't get in that rhythm? Well, I, I think there's definitely a component um, that I found within the video. Um, you know, I have very small triggers throughout my swing that, that allow my body to work the way I want it to work throughout a swing. And, and in some situations, I wasn't getting into those trigger points. Uh, I wasn't getting fully, you know, into my load. It was was one of them with my hands. So just small things like that. But also, uh, you know, uh, as a guy that kind of is fighting for a position all the time, uh, you, you look up and you're, you're five for, you know, 35. And, oh, man, we're halfway through the year. I got to really get going. Um, it, it, just very small sample sizes the whole year. And I think, uh, you know, Guys that started slow, it was tough to tough to get out of those holes, and uh, it's just kind of one of those things. You talked about fighting for a position. Where do you see yourself fitting in in 2021? Yeah, I mean, just just like I said, you know, uh, I've said in the past, I'm a very confident player. Um, I, I know I can contribute on this team still. Uh, I know I can help us win games. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of talented players, uh, which is great for us, obviously. And, uh, you know, Luke really, really did his job last year. I mean, led the major leagues in home runs. You can't, you can't really get much better than that. Um, but for me, you know, it was never really competing in that job. Uh, you know, I, I love the position I'm in, a uh, bench bat uh, uh, that, that can come off, fill in when, when guys need days off, pinch hit. Um, you know, would love consistent at bats, but uh, anything that I can do to help the team, I'm willing to do. You were lucky enough to get opportunities and really earn opportunities in 2019 and 2020, but does any part of you wonder what's going to happen from a minor league perspective, having missed an entire season for those guys last year? 
Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's something that's probably not being talked about that much. But uh, you know, you have you have a lot of younger guys in organizations that have completely lost a year of uh, you know development, uh, just getting used to a schedule. From you know, especially for a high school player to get used to just playing at night, playing 140 games in 150 days, it's very different. Um, the bus rides, you have to do certain things off the field that you're not very used to. So. I think that's probably one thing that they're not talking about a lot. It's it just kind of the situation that happened. That was the best case, you know, just lucky enough that I had made it to the big leagues where I wasn't really affected um, by it other than, you know, going to the alternate site for a little bit, but um, it, it's definitely a tough road. Uh, I, I've had a lot of friends that play in the minor leagues for a long time with me. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I took a little bit longer to get up there than most people. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely crazy to watch. And uh, it, it's sad because you see some people that you know that you know could probably do it at the next level, but it's kind of just one of those things that was just terrible timing. Now, I can't help but notice, it seems as though you're hanging out with somebody in the background back there. Yeah, he's on the floor. Who's your, who's your guy back there? <laughs> yeah, he's my, he's my dog. Uh, he's, he's the best. Uh, two years old now, Golden. He's like 85 pounds, so he's huge. But... Uh, <laughs> Got this shirt, you know, it's a, it's a solid shirt, uh, <laughs> but yeah, some big, big golden father, I guess now, but yeah, he, he's, he's great and keeps me company down here with, uh, without much family down here. So. I like it. Mike, as always, thank you so much for the time. Have a good one. Thanks.